it is some kind of crazy extended object. Now it is described by something you need something to describe it by what is called a state of the system a state vector described by an object called the state vector which is a generalization of the wave function and we will discuss it in great detail and I will tell you how the state vector is defined and how to calculate its properties here but that is what the electron is and as far as I am concerned that is what the electron is in reality. I do not answer questions like is it a wave, is it a particle, is it a wave on some days, particle on other days etc. These are, these are terms which are meaningless when you apply it in the context of quantum mechanical particles. The failure is not on the part of the quantum mechanical particle, the failure is not on the part of the experimentalist, the failure is on the part of the English language. Words like wave, particle and so on have been coined by us to paraphrase a set of properties and these properties are the properties of objects with which we have daily experience, macroscopic objects and then you say a particle and the mental picture you have a particle is like a billiard ball, a hard rigid object very compact sometimes idealized even to a point massive something which is localized carries energy carries momentum and so on. On the other hand the word wave is mentally as far as we are concerned based on our experience with waves in nature which we see around us like water waves or sound waves. These are diffuse objects they are not localized they do not have rigid boundaries they are not hard they are kind of smooth things which are uh, you know gently undulating everywhere delocalized in space in time etc they carry wavelength, they carry frequency and properties of that kind and in a sense we have said we put all classical objects into these two bins. One of them would consist of particles which are compact localized hard objects and the other carrying properties like energy, momentum etc and the other is waves which carry properties like wavelength, frequency etc. They are delocalized extended objects. And we know that in daily life these are mutually exclusive, a wave is not a particle, a particle is not a wave and we can look and see and measure properties and decide whether it falls in this basket or in that other basket. What we should not do is to extrapolate this categorization of objects into waves and particles to the microscopic domain because in that domain it is conceivable that there exist objects which have some of these properties and some of those properties. It is also conceivable that we have objects which have these properties or those properties depending on how you probe them, how you measure these properties and that is what happens for electrons, it is what happens for uh, microscopic particles. Okay. So the failure is not on the part of the electron or on the part of our ability to probe nature, it is on the it is a semantic failure it is a failure of the language. We should not use terms which we are mutually exclusive sets of properties in the macroscopic world to describe the microscopic world. Okay. If you understand that then there is no wave particle duality mystery. It is just that this description fails completely and you need a better description. It so happens not unfortunately but fortunately that that description is not in terms of ordinary language, that description is intrinsically mathematical and that is the language you need to describe these objects there and it is completely unambiguous once you use that description. It is just that you cannot put it back in the normal words to 100 percent efficiency because these words have been coined by us to understand the world of macroscopic uh, phenomena, okay. Is this clear? <coughs> 